and I'll speak. All right. So on one, in three, two, one. Hello and welcome everybody. I am here today with my co-host, co-caster Gary Oak. I am of course Rifkin, aka Rif Kings, and we have a really cool, really fun PvP that was submitted here by one of the uh, fellow Anookers. I don't know if that's the proper phrase or not, but uh, Gary Oak, take it away with the intros. Spawning in the top right-hand corner of Daybreak, it is our blue Protoss player. It is GC's Devonthar. And his opponent spawning in the lower left corner of the map. It's going to be the green Protoss Jacko. Now, a uh, small little backstory about this. I asked about a month and a half ago if anyone on Anook had some really cool replays that they'd like to have cast. And I was specifically looking for some up-and-comers. Nobody famous, nobody that's already well-known, because, quite frankly, they don't need the exposure. They don't need the extra people helping promote them through cast. Now, Jacko, I don't, unfortunately, know your stream offhand, but I do know he does stream quite frequently. He's a Masters Protoss, and uh, he does some funny stuff, and we're going to get to see an example of that in the game here today. I'm looking forward to seeing what he's going to be doing. I was wondering if there's going to be any proxies or whatnot, but no, it doesn't look like that. We've just got pylons at the Nexus. Very standard, very usual here. Yeah, PvP can definitely have some funny tactics. I know there's a lot of people out there who are not quite the biggest fans of PvP. It can be a little slow-paced, and I think that's just... Quite frankly, the nature of the game. You're, well, you have units that are very expensive. You know, they don't have any throwaway units like Zerglings and Marines. Um, you're, you kind of have this... You can't afford to lose the units as easily is what I'm trying to make the point of. Oh darn, I lost my first Zealot. Uh, that's game. That's yeah, pretty it much. It's I, not well, that bad anymore. It's not as bad, but to some extent that is still the, the basics of PvP. It's very refined. And I believe you're the one who were say, uh, said a little bit... Yeah, a little bit ago, uh, it's not as micro-intensive, but it is precision-intensive. Exactly. We saw... I was doing Go4 SC2 on Wednesday, and I was talking about, oh, in PvP, if you miss your force fielder by, like, half a hex, then you can just lose a game. And we actually saw a few games where just that happened. It's, it's pretty silly, but that's just the nature of how force fields work. And uh, Jacko right now, currently going to town on this pylon. Probe trying to be a bit of a hero. Zap, zap. And I want to say, because I don't actually ever notice this, the probe animation while attacking a pylon is kind of cool. It's like lightning bolt setting the shield and bounces off and disperses. I don't know. It's silly, but it's cool. The small yeah, things in life. The little pink things coming out of it, too. Yeah, I never really look at it in detail. Now, to comment on both players here, um, they were going for a pretty similar build set, but now we see Jacko taking a second gas very early. His cybernetic score was a bit later, so that will delay his warp tech only ever so slightly. Does Devonthar know about it? No, he does not know about it. He did not scout either geyser. Yeah, so Jacko's I mean, scouting his base. Yeah, I'm a little curious to see what Jacko's going to do with this because, I mean, when you've got double gas this early, I mean, yes, that could lean towards a four gate, but it's not the most effective. Um, so we might just have tech choices come out of him. If he goes for Blink, you know, it's Daybreak. There's tons of ways to get into the base from the main entrance. Of course, being that they are both Protoss, a well-placed force field can deny a lot of damage. He could even go for DTs. I've seen DT play quite a bit on this map, well, pretty oh, much any map. Ooh, I didn't even catch this. Devonthar Boxy actually Robo. proxying a Robo, yeah. It's a little yes. bit crazy. We'll see what he... I mean, on Immortal, some War Prisms, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Anything that comes out of a proxied Robo is usually going to result in some good times for the casters. Could even be, could even be a proxy for gate. It is a proxy for gate. so what he's probably going to do is just use this to make a War Prism, as you said, and then for gate with a War Prism rather than having to hide a forward pylon, which Jacko actually scouted for. Well, this is definitely going to be really cool. And like I said, guys, these are both Masters players. So, I mean, this is... Uh, I don't think... If Jackal can catch wind of this early enough, I don't think it will shut him down. He does have his own gates coming down right now as we speak. He has a Twilight Council on the way as well. And quite frankly, Gary Oak, a lot of the times, tech beats out any sort of cheese or strategy. It really could. The reason why Forgate could be really effective here is because if he starts warping in units, they're coming in increments of four at a time versus three at a time, and that's just basic math. Yeah, uh, I mean, it the looks only... like he might even be going DTs. Look at his gas count. Yeah, he's been pulling a lot of gas. Not only that, but he's got lots of Chrono Energy on this Nexus. Um, he is kind of poking around. Gets... Will he catch wind of this, though, as he moves south? He is Ooh, south there's bound. a Dark Shrine. Okay, so the Dark Shrine has him started. As you said, there are going to be DTs, but uh, Jacko's not going to catch this Warp Prism. No oh, Immortals. Oh, anti-timing. Oh, this is so unfortunate, and I think this is even dropping out of vision of Jacko. It just is. barely at that. Oh, and he gets a warp in as well, so there's eight units against nothing, against oh. increments of three. Four zealots, really three stalkers, this is, yeah, this is going to be rough. 
However, he is going full offensive with this. He's got his own stalkers and zealots in his opponent's base. He's going for the core. He gets the core. That is that is huge. No stalkers, just zealots against this. Well, if this Dark Templar, oh, the Dark Shrine can't complete in time. But I mean, right now, here, this can be. He can't lose these warp gates if oh, the shrine he... completes. Meanwhile, in the oh, other wow, base, Jacko, he just picked off a pile and that was powering half of Soul Korea. And he's and gonna get the other one right now. And now there's no more units coming in from Devonthar. That warp prism is going to be pretty useless. However, both players do evacuate their probes out of the base. So if this does turn into a base trade situation, it's definitely not over. Now the, the dark shrine. Ooh, the really unfortunate thing for Jacko here though is he doesn't have a lot of minerals. No more nexus. However, Devonthar can easily place a nexus somewhere else. But the Dark Shrine is completing right now. Can he get a warp in of at least a Dark Templar? There are no observers on the map at the moment. Where's the DT being warped? In? There oh, it is. Oh, right he at home. It warped it in. And he goes for the Dark Shrine. Oh, to oh Gary Oak! He's got the Robo Bay, but he's supply blocked. He can't build an observer. Oh my god. This one Dark Templar has the potential to take out all of Devonthar's forces. We'll have to see. The probes are here, though. The Nexus is being rebuilt, so. Ugh. Yeah, right now Jacko's not best situation. He doesn't have the minerals, especially after the warp in. He can try and build a pylon and maybe in a similar to hold on, but I mean to fight Devonthar. He, well, he's got the Dark Templar, and if no pylons go up anytime soon for Devonthar, if he doesn't get an observer out, he's going to lose to this one Dark Templar. One important point is that this DT kills too many of these probes, and then I'll actually free up enough supply potentially. Good to point, Gary. Observer. Actually, I don't think it will because there are four stalkers plus the warp prism. The nexus is almost complete, though. It's oh, good point. Health. Good point. And now and he's, he's starting just down some more pylons. To However, the DT. Jacko, I think Jacko might have wind. I don't know if he knows that he's supply blocked and that there's no observer because I mean he knows. Okay, there's a warp prism. Where's the observer? It should have been out by now. It isn't. All this pylon tactic is so brilliant because. Ten more supply, he will be able to get that observer once that nexus completes. Oh, and it yep, does the observer get is on the way. Oh man, with the observer started, this could be it for Jacko. This Dark Templar is really his only hope to getting back into this. He Devonthar... has no idea about this this robo at all. Uh, you know what? Actually, if Devonthar can get, or sorry, if Jacko can get a fight, he's got superior numbers without the Dark Templar. The probes can tank for those stalkers. Um, I he's actually just fucking around the rosy of the Dark Templar right now. But here comes the weird. observer. Oh no, if he drops these stalkers out, he's gonna be able to start poking away. He'll be However, able to kill this DT. Jacko's reinforcements are coming just in time! And this Does one Jacko pylon. Have enough? Jacko has a lot more probes than they have even stalker counts. Yeah, and he has and two zealots to boot. He'll be able I to think kill this Jacko... Nexus. <laughs> and I think Devonthar a little Whoa. bit angry with the ending of this game, but who can blame him, Gary Oak? Look at the way that went. I I wouldn't have called it to be so close, but it was. Jimmy's have been compromised, man. And uh, before we close off this replay, I do want to point out Jack actually still has his Nexus, so not too bad. Well played.